The White House announcing this morning is planning to invest $5 billion to get the National Semiconductor Technology Center off the ground with the intent to bolster U.S. national security and secure semiconductor jobs. Joining us right now, former White House CHIPS coordinator Ronnie Chatterjee. Uh, he's a professor at Duke University. Good morning to you. Uh, Ronnie, it's, it's funny because I don't know if another headline has effectively overtaken this one. We're talking about $5 billion. And, of course, the Wall Street Journal this morning reporting that Sam Altman is looking for 5 to $7 trillion. And it all sort of, on a relative basis, you say to yourself, well, what's really happening here? How important is uh, what's happening this morning uh, from the White House? Both fives are important, the five billion and the five trillion. Let's start with the five billion. Um, the National Semiconductor Technology Center is going to be a big effort around research and development by the U.S. government, private sector, other public sector organizations like National Labs to get together and make sure that we're not just leading in the current generation of chips, but we're leading in the next generation as well. So what you're seeing today is the construction of a public-private partnership. You got the Department of Energy, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense, all at the table with private industry to make sure that we're leading in the next generation of chips. We have to design new chips, we have to prototype them, and we have to pilot them to make sure we're not just leading with the fabs that are being built today, but we're leading tomorrow in the summer. How, how, much, how much money of, of the five billion, do you know, do we understand really how it's being spent? I think there are a lot of people who say $5 billion, a lot of money. And, uh, you know, the private sector, I don't know if you think they're doing a good or a bad job, but this is clearly going to be something separate from that. So you're right. The private sector, since the CHIPS Act was announced, has invested about $200 billion in private investment in building fabs and R&D all around the United States. So we're seeing that. Private capital is going to drive the success of the CHIPS Act. And I think in the first year, you've seen evidence of that. But you also need a government commitment to get all the stakeholders together to figure out what is the path for research and development? What are the new chips we're going to develop? How are we going to package them? What kinds of products are they going to go into? And getting us on the same page with a center like this is really important, even though the actual dollar amount is much less than the private sector investment would be or with the open AI initiative that you mentioned earlier. The news of Sam Altman, though, is pursuing this much money shows, Ronnie, that money is flowing to where there is innovation, right? It, it, the fact that he can have and try and raise that order of magnitude to build fabs uh, that will make AI chips shows that there is that demand. And on the other side, you had Intel delaying the completion of its $20 billion Ohio plant because of the downturn in the industry. So is there a danger here that we're subsidizing the wrong things instead of paying attention to what market forces are telling us? Well, what I see is the market telling us that there's a massive opportunity in the United States. That's where you've seen $200 billion of investment in the U.S. When it comes to AI chips, we're going to need new fabs and we're going to need new designs. And I think Altman's uh, announcement today reflects that. But I think a lot of that is going to be designed and manufactured in the United States. Of course, other countries around the world are going to play a role, and you're going to see these new chip ventures. To me, it shows there's a promising bet on the industry here in the United States and what has always been a global industry and will continue to be a global industry. Ronnie, I got a question for you. If Sam Altman is successful in raising, I don't know if he's going to raise five, seven trillion dollars on, on moment one, but let's say he actually raises even half a trillion dollars, which would be a remarkable amount of money uh, or more. Is that something that would concern you? I mean, as, as a policymaker, given you talk about concentration, I know there's lots of folks who are trying to compete in this space, but you know, if if scale is becoming about capital even more than anything else, what, is that, what does that mean to the larger sort of state of play here? So artificial intelligence at a high level is based on three things. You need the people, you need the data, and you need the chips. And so I see Altman's announcement today to be firmly about the chips piece of it. And I think this is why I'm glad we passed the Chips Act in August of 2022 to put America on solid footing. We have to see where the money is going to come from, where the fabs are going to be built, also where the chips are going to be designed. But I think more competition in the industry at the end of the day and more production of these kinds of chips is going to benefit consumers and benefit people across all industries. So I'm watching to see, like everyone else. But from a policymaker's perspective, this is exactly what the CHIPS Act is all about. We're trying to make sure the United States has a stronghold in the industries of the future to make sure the right. innovation and you jobs are here. What I'm asking is, in, in a day and age where, where the Department of Justice and Lena Khan are worried about concentration and power, if you look at Sam Altman in success, somebody who would control compute power of, of this magnitude that we're talking about, plus control one of the most powerful large language models and probably be able to generate an even larger and more successful large language model on top of those chips, the, both of those things together, does that, does that change anybody's equation about how they're thinking about these things? Right now, the chip guys have been over here. 
The, the software uh, AI uh, guys have been separated. There hasn't been enough chips to begin with. If, if someone corners the market on the chips and has the model, what does that mean? Well, I think you will have to look at the details of how this venture comes out. But I think already, even in AI, you're seeing a distribution of a lot of different companies. NVIDIA is obviously leading the world designing chips, but those chips are made by TSMC, which is investing in the United States and Arizona. So I think it'll be interesting to see how the configuration comes together. But even if OpenAI is successful in this raise or they create a new chip venture, I imagine a lot of firms are going to be involved in that ecosystem, including a lot of firms investing and based in the United States of America.